This is the joy of editing, and guess what? There's another update for Topaz Photo AI version 2.1.1. There's a few changes in here that I just want to go over today. This will be a shorter video. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. On the screen right now, you can see some of the uh, changes and fixes to this new update in Topaz Photo AI version 2.1.1. I'm just going to go over a few of those today, but you might want to pause the video and take a look at these changes and fixes. By the way, if you don't yet own Topaz Photo AI or any of the other great products from Topaz, I have affiliate links in the description below. When you use those links, I make a small commission and this helps me to keep these tutorials coming your way. And when you do that, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I truly thank you. The first thing I want to go over is they added the ability to download missing models or to update corrupted models in the app. Now, I would believe this would be dealing with all the different AI models in the app, and you have them everywhere in sharpening, recover faces, upscaling, remove noise, as well as the remove tool. So anywhere there's AI models, this is go going to help you out. And what you need to do is come up here to the Topaz Photo AI menu, click on Topaz Photo AI, click on Preferences, and you're going to find this under General. And if you come down here, if you scroll down, you're going to find this section right here. Enable in-app model downloads. In-app model downloads are enabled. If we detect an outdated or corrupted model, we will attempt to re-download it. Now, I turned mine on, so I think that's a good thing to have turned on. But I just wanted to make that known to you that this is something new. If you don't want this enabled, you can toggle it off by clicking on it. And then you'd have to click Save to save whichever choice you have but I'm leaving mine on and you'll notice save is no longer blue because I've already changed that before. Now to close this preferences, all you need to do is either click cancel or click outside of the dialog and that will close your preferences. The next thing I want to point out, they fixed towel artifacting issues on some upscale models. So when you're upscaling your image, there's been users reporting some toweling issues where when they would upscale, you would see different tile patterns in the image. So this should be corrected now. Now, this is a special note to Mac owners that have uh, M-series chips in their computers like an M1, M2, M3. You'll need to toggle off Use Neural Engine because the problem is coming with the Neural Engine. So you need to toggle that off. And for all you M-series Mac users out there, this is what you're going to see. See where it says Use Neural Engine? You need to toggle that off. And you'll notice the note on the left, Neural Engine is enabled by default to speed up processing on Apple Silicon Macs. Disable Neural Engine if you see grid artifacts in your results. Disabling Neural Engine will slow down processing, but will fix grid artifacts in areas with low detail like large skies, blurry backgrounds, large areas of single color, or areas with minimal changes in the background. You're only going to see this Use Neural Engine toggle switch on M-Series Macs. Now, this is a screenshot from my MacBook Air with an M1 chip. If you have a Mac with an Intel-based processor or, or Windows machines, you don't have to worry. It's taken care of for you. You don't have to worry about toggling Use Neural Engine off. Now, the next updates are dealing with the Remove tool. Now, I'm just using a stock image here, and I'm going to click on Remove, and we're going to go into the Remove tool dialog. One thing I did notice with this new update on my Intel-based Mac, my remove time went from 57 seconds down to 39 seconds. So that's a slight improvement. If you're experiencing a little faster times for removal, let me know in the comments section below. I'd like to hear from you. Now, here's an improvement with the brush tool. Now, before when you would start to paint, and if you would go out of bounds and then come back in, you'd have to lift your brush and start to paint again. And that was very annoying, but they fixed that. So I'm glad about that. Now, here's another change, and it deals with the subtract brush. So let me go ahead here. I'm going to get myself a nice big brush, the largest brush I can get, 600 pixels, okay? And I found this is a really handy way. If you want to get rid of a bunch of stuff at once in an image like this, especially on an image like this, now it's going to vary from image to image, but right here, I could click right here, and then I could come down here and click like this. Now I've selected that whole area there. 
Now I can make my brush smaller. I'll get to that subtract thing in a second. I'm just going to go with the smaller brush. Now you can use your left or right bracket keys to increase or decrease your brush size. I'm going to click right here. And now I get this large mask sizes here and they recommend not going over 2000 by 2000 pixels. And in reality, this is only a, this round circle here. That's only a 600 pixel brush. So we're looking at around 1200 pixels here. So I'm well under 2000. So you'll get this message, but you can disregard it if you're not over 2000. I'm going to make this brush a little bit smaller like this and click here once and maybe click here and this little thing here. I'll click here. See if I can get rid of this all at once. But here's the thing. Right now I have the add brush. So if I type my X key or click on subtract, I'm just going to use my X key, type my X key and make my brush a little bit larger and subtract off of here. Now, if I forget to click add again, once I click remove, it'll automatically reset back to add. So that's a pretty cool thing. So let me go ahead and click remove and I'll get right back to you. See what kind of job this does. And I'm back. Hey, guess what? I forgot to get rid of this one, but I've tried this before and got rid of all these at just one shot, one removal, which was pretty nice. So I was pretty impressed with that. And by the way, you can see now it has reset back to the ad brush. So that is a new feature as well. Now, once we remove something, we still don't have the feature to undo it. I hope that comes to Photo AI because that would be a great feature. But if you do paint brush strokes, you could do a command or control Z to undo a brush stroke. So that's kind of nice. And I don't know if I pointed that out in my last tutorial, but you can undo brush strokes with command or control Z. Now, just for the sake of it, I don't need this little leaf right here. I think it detracts, but I like those other leaves removed. I think that really helps. Let me go ahead and click remove. And after 39 seconds, I am back. Now, once you're done with the removal tool, by the way, all you need to do is click close and apply. If you're done working on the image, click save to save the image. But there you go. This is the latest update for Topaz Photo AI version 2.1.1. Well, there it is. That's a first look at the latest update for Topaz Photo AI version 2.1.1. Hey, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.